Pitching to MV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a Jackhammer Chatterbait. All Patreon members will receive 5% off all of their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle each and every month. You will also get 10% off all of your orders to our newest sponsor, Tiger Crankbaits, who won best in show at the Richmond Fishing Expo. You will also gain membership to our private Facebook group com community where we talk about fishing, what's coming up, and you'll be entered into weekly prize giveaways, private live streams and videos, and so much more. If you would like to see Fishing the DMV continue to bring you content, please think about joining. Link in the episode description. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Night Live. How are we doing today? This first day of April. And for our kind of like April Fool's thing, I'm getting out of my comfort zone, which is talking about our local waterways, because we just got to talk about the craziness that's going on in the fishing industry. I just want to dip my toe into this. Uh, I guess advisory warning for everyone here. If you don't like to listen to about all this stuff, no worries. I promise you we'll be going back to our normal broadcasting stuff as usual starting tomorrow. So do not worry about this. This is kind of a one-off. If you like it, great. If not, do not worry about it. We'll get back into our, our region. But it's been some crazy stuff. So I don't know what's going on really because I'm busy with all of you. So I wanted to bring on some heavy hitters in the industry in our local area to talk about this because Bassmasters have had some crazy stuff going on lately. And we also had some stuff going on with Major League Fishing, just drama upon drama upon drama. And a couple of fishing tournaments were actually won with fish being caught. So without further ado, let's bring into our first guest. He runs the Bass Cast. He's been on the last time we talked about drama. We talked about Icon Boats, aka, you know, IKEA boats that were about $150,000 or the price of a country in Africa. Uh, we got the man, Brian Carter from the Bass Cast. How are you doing tonight, sir? I am doing great. Yourself? Uh, thank you. Am, thank you for having me on the show, man. No, you're welcome. I, I, and I don't want to be known as the Doomsday guy, okay? I mean, you know. You have to get me on a different show. I don't. Be, we don't want to be known as Doomsday, but we are big and heavy in the tournament scene. I mean, because that's what it, we do here at thebassguest.com. How was the Bassmaster Classic, by the way? I did not go. My team went. I went to Redcrest. You went to um, Redcrest. We had to break it up because of guys. I mean, it was. <clears throat> if I was free, I probably would have went because it wasn't but about eight hours away from uh, Birmingham, Alabama, where me and Danielle went for uh, four days for Redcrest 2024. And I'll say this, Redcrest 2024 was a good event. I, I, I ain't going to say great, but it was a good event. And uh, it's a, I recommend it for anybody. I mean, it's, you know, people say it was quiet. It wasn't, you know, if you saw the photos, there weren't a whole lot of people there. But the cool thing is you could talk to Kevin Van Dam for like 10 minutes if you wanted. Nobody was there. The, the one thing that's interesting, and this is a whole segment, I, again, if, if I had to write a obituary for Major League Fishing in, in 100 years, it was uh -oh. great I, great ideas that were just badly executed, but they were good ideas. And even the day off in between, so you can meet pros and you could do stuff for your sponsors. It's like, all right, that's an interesting pitch meeting in, in a, a TV yeah. show. I like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We, we will definitely get to that. But we have another guy that's backstage. Uh, I talked to him a little bit beforehand here. He runs the Cat Series. And if I'm mistaking anything, Mark, please let me know here. But Mark runs is the tournament director for the North Carolina Cat Organization. Is that correct, Mark? Yes, sir. James River Cat. It's under a Carolina Angler Team Trail. We're the James River Division. We have a lot Sorry, of fun stuff. To, we have a lot of fun stuff to talk about tonight. And I really want to get caught up with it and make sure that we can kind of let everyone do a timetable here of, of what's happening. And just to kind of get into the meat of it, I guess, without further ado, uh, and Brian, maybe you can really set up this timeline. The first thing that really hit off was Brian New and the Bass Masters. Could, could you give a little insight, just the background leading up? What, what happened there? Yeah, it was during practice. I mean, Brian just, I mean, he, you know, he did something stupid and got caught. That's exactly what happened. I mean, you know, someone, another angler saw him stir up a bed. <clears throat> you guys all know it's bed in season time right now. And, you know, he just did it. So the fish, no one would be able to practice there. I mean, pretty much that's what it is. I mean, he eliminated a practice spot for another angler to fish. And I went uh, and looked it up. It's a angler con uh, code of conduct. It's on their Bassmaster website because they really did hide this whole entire thing 
if it was, I'll be honest, guys, if it went for Brian News video, what would what, we'd have never heard nothing, ain't that right? Nothing about what happened, unless I you really want to scroll on Bassmaster's website. I mean, because it was deep underneath there, and it was two paragraphs. Brian New broke a rule, conduct, and it really, as always, I don't know if the reason why nobody can bring up what they did, but the video, you know, what Brian New said, he was the de queued, the reason why, and he went ahead and got ahead of the press release that was coming out. And, and and so basically he he used his trolling motor to blow out the bed. I want to make sure that I'm not doing drama or that that is actually no. what happened, correct? Okay. Yeah. Yes. And the thought there is by blowing out one bed, he was going to prevent someone else from catching it. Was this actually a strategy or is he just frustrated with this other person in his area? You know, that's that's a great question right there. I mean, it it was mainly so no one else could practice before the line was cut off i guess that's what it is i mean i haven't looked back enough at that we've had enough going on with watson to you know to and that's, <laughs> yeah it, it's hard to know what exactly is going on with new with the distraction of what's going on with watson and mlf and i agree 100 percent. but i mean he i mean he admitted to what he did and he stated why he did what he did but yeah I don't know. I mean, I don't know why it would be so far down the radar on things, but I mean, <clears throat> I guess the biggest, I would say the biggest reason is publicity. When you're looking at the difference in the situations, like Bass has a way of handling things that's, it's said none, you know, there, whereas MLF has a way of handling things that could be said, you know, whatever, but, you know, Bass has been around a long time and I think it's a testament to their time, you know, how they run things. And, and we'll definitely get, we will spend a lot of time with MLF, believe that. And, but I, to, to, to yeah, get go, to go what you, I don't want to interrupt, but to get what you're saying there, you know, when the press release came out for Brian New, it said the Bass Council had made a decision. They buried and, it. Well, they buried it, yes. But at the same time, there's a council there that actually made the decision whether they buried it or not. I don't think Major League Fishing has a council. I think it's just one person making all the decisions. I really don't know. Because you never no, hear about it. I've heard, I swear, I can't. I'd have to go back and watch it again, but I swear I've heard James Watson say they have a group. I've, okay. I swear I've heard him say that in a podcast with Luke Duncan to be exact. Okay. Is that I think they have like a little group, but I mean, but my bad. Yeah, no, we, got, we got Craig on here. He's got a good question. Here we go. He said, I heard he used his big motor too. He knew he had been seen, so he went back within a half hour to pretend he was going to fish there again. Again, this is all hearsay. If you want to go to see the video from new, we, we unless there's right. GoPro footage, we just have to take his word on it. To, to, to me, the interesting thing here in here is, I break things down because this is a sport in general, and it's things that happen off off the field controversy and in the field controversy. Uh, the biggest grievance would be something like what the Astros did, where they were blatantly cheating to win a ring. One hundred percent, that was on the field drama. Yep. Off the field drama would be like you know there was a, a wide receiver that was well known that got in a shouting match with Goodell, and he got suspended for it. Nothing right. to do with the field of play. Well, what just happened a day ago is Juan Ramirez for the New York Mets, who's a reliever, he got a three-game suspension because he purposely, intentionally threw at a batter that he had a beef with. Oh, the, wow. The big issue there is Ramirez is from the baseball culture of, like, this is normal. You do this. But he made it very public with how he expressed, like, okay, this is, this is the unwritten rule. You do this. The point of an unwritten rule is you don't bring attention to it and you shut up about it. Otherwise, right. it's an issue. And I think with the Brian New thing, it's kind of where it is. Like maybe in fishing, you're allowed to do this, but you can't, don't bring attention to it because it doesn't look good. Yeah. Like I said, you know, there was another podcast show that, you know, he was actually there watching and, you know, caught the video and, you know, did, he reported the issue. So, I mean, it's. It is it, it is what it is and it's it's a bonehead stupid decision and this kind of gets back to my show a week ago and we were talking about camaraderie in sports and it's the same with you guys all know i, I my family's big in nascar 
This thing got so daggone expensive now, like we talked about the $180,000 bass boats, and then released a $200,000 bass boat, the classic. Oh my God, yeah. We are doing, <laughs> we are doing whatever <laughs> we can do to pay the bills. With night vision. Yeah, night vision. And I was shocked at the $110,000 boat I saw at the Richmond Expo. I was like, golly, dang. It, it, so, but I mean, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Though we're 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 it's no more camaraderie in it anymore. It's we're doing whatever we can do to cash a check because we got to cash a check because we got a eight hundred dollar boat payment now for forty for twenty five years. We are, and it it's so freaking that, that, that's so freaking interesting because I I feel like the industry is constricting. We're seeing this every day. That's why I think there's more drama right now with the social media aspect. Yes. Um, and so they're claiming they just want all those view dollars. It was. I have a real beef with what Zaldane did with that video um, when the Toledo Ben thing came out because that that Japanese angler, if you watch the whole video, he's in it for like three seconds and mm -hmm. he only put him on the thumbnail because he won. And if you watch the interaction between those two, it's just uncomfortable. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't speak the language. And I feel like yeah. kind of like it, it was, I, I personally think it was a little unethical personally for the clickbaits, like pick on an American angler that gets it. But him was just, it was just weird. Yeah. but it's it's for the clicks you know yep. but i mean so, it's you know it the, the, the it just doesn't got crazy it really has and you guys i guess you've seen we got a tournament coming up in what a uh mark like a week or two or something like that that's a non board facing sonar tournament that uh this guy has put together he's a rich dude he got a lot of dig on money and uh you know trying to get back to the basics because like you said people are kind of upset pissed off and you wonder if it'll ever trickle down to where it gets back to and it's you're right it's not but people are dropping out left and right guys that term efficient i can I mean, tell you a hundred percent on the level you know there's levels to this and that's you know the one thing i try to remember you know so bass is on one level mlf is on another level you know, we're talking about regional, you know, there is a, a well-known tournament trail that was established that is on the highest level I think you're going to get, which is the Elite 70 Alpha. So I don't know what she can't may have ever heard, but I've never heard of anything about forward facing sonar. Nobody's ever asked me a question about it. Um, my knowledge on forward facing, forward facing sonar is very limited. I've only messed with it a handful of times. You know, if guys want to do that, they can. But the problem is, just like everything in life, things evolve. We evolve. We grow. Things change. And <clears throat> whether you like it or not, it's the truth of the matter is that as we advance or as we move forward, we're going to make advancements that, you know, it's just change. And, you know, if the guys want to have a no forward facing sonar tournament, they can you know, like I, I'm not yeah. against it or for it. It's just to me, it's another thing that just creates drama. And, uh, you know, I hope that guy has success with the no four faces in our tournament. I will, I'll definitely be paying attention to it. Cause I'd like to see how it goes down. But, uh, yeah, man, it, like I was saying in that post, man, it's, it's not like it used to be in the fishing world anymore. A hundred percent, you know, it's it literally in a matter of less than 10 years, we've gotten to where we are today. It's, you know, as far as technology goes. Mark, it's funny because, you know, a lot of the guys that, you know, I'm hanging out with at, at tournaments and at events are saying we're fishing like we did five years ago. And for some reason, we're being dummies and still fishing that way. And we're getting our butts kicked. Well, and this That's is something that I brought up um, last week on, I think it was the uh, Patreon version. In 2005, uh, Hummingbird released their side scan technology and in 2006 twitter was actually created and in 2008 alton jones won the classic down i think it was at hartwell using side scan to find those trees and then there was a ton of uproar amongst the fishing community when that technology came out the difference yeah. is social media was literally just created now fast forward to the hyperbolic twitter you know metaverse thing that we're in now right. everything gets cranked up to 11 and i just said I cannot tell if if you look back in history how much of this is worse be, just because of the technology and how much of it has just been magnified 
by social media. If social media was as hot as it was back in 2008 when Alton Jones won the classic with side scan, would it have been just as hot? I, why wouldn't it have been just as hot? I don't know. Brian, hold on. So I, today I heard Luke's, uh, oh man, I don't know who he had. I can't remember who he had on there, but they had mentioned something about all this, about guys that had an opinion or, you know, people that had right. an opinion about four face sun art. He made a good point, man. A lot of times it's a scheduling thing, you oh, know, like, agree. Oh yeah. Yes. So yeah, I've said that. You, it's like, so again, regionally to Virginia, like Lake Anna or Smith Mountain, you and I talked. I've never been to Smith Mountain. I want to go, but I can only imagine Fort Facing Sonar takes you a lot farther there than it would on the Chick James River, if you will, on a river title. Oh, yeah. I oh, could yeah. be wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah you're right. You, so you, yeah. a lot of it has to do with location. A lot of it has to do with scheduling. Like when we go up north, when those guys go to fish for smallmouth, you're going to hear some complaining, but I promise you, a lot of the guys you hear complaining are going to be looking down when they're fishing. They're going to be. It, yeah. it's, I think a it, lot of that's it. That's what it was last year. And this is funny, too, because when what you look at the comments. Remember flogging when that became yes. a problem with. And they did it last year as well. It, yes, they it did. It's interesting because yes. when you look at the comment section of the Toledo Bend, the Lake Fork things, it was never really bashing bass it was bashing forward facing sonar but if it was major league fishing they'd be bashing major league fishing and to me it's like you have to mm. understand bass you have to understand the greater magnification of the issues that are here that because of the tightening of sponsorship dollars because they're not owned by espn because it's not in this booming economy they do need this it just is what it is like they need garmin and so when you see these people in these comment sections they're like just get rid of garmin or Lawrence, it's like have you thought the next two steps yeah. ahead what that means so let's keep that in context here for, for what we're talking about now with that said why are you having a tournament at toledo bend that time of year when you know it'll play which gets to your point you know what's going to happen yeah oh right? yeah you were talking about the sponsorship yeah the scheduling but you're talking about sponsorship dollars and we go back to nascar when they got rid of winston cup and brought in us cellular and it brought in sprint and then it brought in all those and we were you know they were extremely scared that you know because sprint I, I mean uh winston was like huge i mean millions of dollars they put into racing back in the day and it's the same now with the electronics uh the boat dealers that are putting all the money into these tournament series and these tournament trails you know you kind of you wonder if there's enough money in the bank that if you were to cut one of them and say, okay, I'm going to, you know, do away with one of the sponsors, could they continue to make it on after they released one of these major sponsors? Because I mean, NASCAR did it. They suffered for a little while and then, you know, had, you know, what NASCAR did well, and this is where you have to blame bass and FLW because MLF wasn't a thing back then is when let's say side skin in 2005 came out, you should right. have been like NASCAR been forward projecting. We need to think about putting in limitations now. Yes. Just like NASCAR did before this genie got out of the bottle. Yes. It, it, like I, I forget now, maybe the comment section, you guys can tell me more about the NASCAR history, but there were certain events that said like, we need to put restrictions in now. I'm pretty sure it was a death or two that caused it, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. but that's what's gotta happen. I mean, it's but, the same with the, same with the umbrella rig. I mean, you know, they didn't waste any time with the daggone umbrella rig. I mean, my goodness, it was very, very little time. It's like it's banned. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I remember right. when that first came out too. I was yeah, like, I mean, and Brian knew was the main sponsor of that umbrella rig too. It was Diaston Reservoir. It was Shane was the first Bates. Time I ever threw it. It, I mean, it is interesting. Thing, yeah, and it, that thing drew opinions just like Ford Face and Sun are. I mean, it. Yep. It went so bad that states had to put sanctions on it. You know what I mean? Like, and to a degree, let's be honest, we're we're talking about one lure with with multiple hooks and this, that, and the other. I've heard guys like, well, a treble hook has three hooks, so a crankbait has six. And I'm like, all right, well, you know what I mean? Like, yep, yeah, that, that's 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 a shitty argument. I mean, like, okay, you're not gonna catch one fish per each treble hook. Like, I mean, come exactly. on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. And to me, it's, it's, like, and it's rare. Yeah. Again, it kind of goes to my, I'll have this 
opinion about all things that deal with all the dramas. It's just drama. And, and if you can make a mountain out of a molehill and it'll draw attention and, and they'll get, you know, like you were saying, social media clicks, they'll get likes, they'll get shares. And I mean, you know, like I told Brian, I don't think a lot of people truly understand what it's like to be a content creator and what you have to, it's not just, you know, doing like what we're doing. It's not just, you know, for me, it kind of is because thank you guys for allowing me to come on. But, you know, I'm out here in the back of my truck in my front yard. You guys have studios. So y'all put a lot of time and effort. And I think that gets looked over by the general fans, if you will, like I used to be where I didn't have an inside look on what, you know, not only, you know, professional anglers, but content creators. Look at Ben Milliken. He's doing both at one time. Um, there's a lot of things that the general public just doesn't think about with you guys or professional anglers or organizations. And to me, it's just sad that now it used to be like when Ray Scott was that bass, dude, and it was just bass, really just bass. You know, they had to work their butts off to get to where they are. And now no punt against Ben Milliken because I am a big, big, big fan of his and I support him a lot. Actually, probably the only guy I support on the Patreon, but you know, that guy can fish, but he's also got it figured out, but he does know the fact that negativity sells quicker than positivity. And that's, oh yeah, you know, that's kind of what's brought us here right now to talk about it. So... <laughs> Yeah, and I would also say the issue would be when you say about content creators is how YouTube has clamped down on AdSense money. And so now you have a lot of people that, you know, six, seven years ago, I don't think there would be as much as drama. Maybe it's because I'm an optimist because you were making more. You didn't have to just do clickbait shit. Yeah, so can I ask y'all a question? Can I ask you two a question? All right, so as a fisherman, say like 10 years ago, would it have been more beneficial for me to have started then to create a YouTube channel yes. to work oh, all yeah. the way till now? Yep. Or yes. now let me ask you something. Would it have been more beneficial two years ago when things were really spicy to create a channel and start doing it? So that's what I'm asking is, is it easier now to just create a channel and go fishing and create some content and sell? No. Or, TikTok. Go ahead. TikTok. If as it stays as around, <laughs> as long as it's here, as long as it's here, as long as it gets doesn't get um, us sent out of the country and packed bags and sent home. Social media is where it really is now. YouTube doesn't pay anymore like they used to, and it's kind of uh, you guys heard the shooting, and that's why. It, what was that? Good gosh, Thomas, how many? Has that been like ten years ago now? When it kind of started that whole downward spiral, and mm -hmm. lady went in, and she actually got pissed off because they cut her money in half from YouTube. And she went in and shot up the place or shot up some people yep. or some mess like that. I don't remember the whole story. But yeah, YouTube does not pay what it used to pay anymore. And content creators now are having to diverse big time. And, you know, even, you know, podcast during COVID, if it wasn't for the podcast show, I probably wouldn't have had a diversification. So, I mean, you got to really be diversified these yeah. days if you're going to be on social media. And, so, and just to, you know, I don't want to go down. I could talk about yeah. this stuff for six hours straight. Um, but right, it's also the value of what corporate corporate America has been chasing YouTube and podcasts because it's the next thing. You know, yeah. like brick and mortar TV is completely dead right now. Each person can be their own TV show, but they don't know how to value it. And ten years ago. You would look at a guy that actually had, let's say, 50,000 people following him that were diehards. And they thought, like, that's insane numbers because it technically is because, you know, fit, you can't fit 50,000 people in a movie theater. And so if you get a good percentage of them that will follow you, that's a good number. And so they were throwing money at, like, the dude perfect and people like that when they got started, mm -hmm. which they had smaller followings. Then TikTok came and nuked everything because you can get six trillion views. That's a number I don't think a human brain can comprehend, but corporate's like, that's important. We don't have 6 trillion people in the United States. And so most yeah. of those views are empty calories, but it completely screwed up every other platform because corporate is now saying, unless you have this many blank, it's not worth it. And so now everyone has to chase more and more views to get less and less money, if that kind of makes sense. And you're working harder for it too. Yeah. I mean, you really are. I mean, you're I'm, selling your soul. You're selling your soul for it, to be honest. I mean, I hate to say that because, you know, it was just a few years ago I was watching a, podcast, uh, a YouTube video and this guy said, 
uh, a company wouldn't even reach out to him unless he had 50,000 followers. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, we're, we're talking about you really, because they know now that, what do you think, Thomas, 5% of the 50,000 or maybe even 10, we're going to go high that are actually real and are actually people who are following that actually purchase. So that's where it gets into, but yeah, we're, that's another night, but yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that kind of like leads into what you, what we were saying here with, with the social media and phishing is it, it is, it is very matured with the, almost the drama level now. And I told a friend yesterday, it kind of reminds me of other sports like the NBA or, or the yes. NFL where it's LeBron James gets on Twitter and says something because he's a billion dollar player. And now I feel like there's a lot of fishermen that act like NFL stars. And it's like, yeah. Like, and it's like, now not all of them, not all the drama, but all, some of it is over the wintertime, especially like when Randy Block and Milliken met on YouTube, the big throwdown. It's like, oh, come on, yeah. guys, really? It, it, and it's funny because they handled actually, that very well. I they think they both handled that very well. They were both very, Ben, I, if you, if you see this, you were quite the adult. You really were. That's, but yeah, you're right, man. I mean, social media, I mean, Guys, go to the basscast.com Facebook page right now. I wrote a story last night, dropped it about seven o'clock, uh, and it was uh, Watson versus Boyd. And then the press release and just what happened underneath it. We're talking about like about 50 comments underneath each one, maybe even more. I'd have to go look. But I mean, it's now where your opinion matters, and all you got to do is say that, and it's going to blow up. I mean, you know, everybody's got their thoughts and opinions, and this thing's been going crazy. To give, yeah, and give you guys like my point of view on that is, you know, a lot of people go, well, the content creators are the problem, or social. Whereas I believe really social media is the problem because the content creator could be NBC or Fox, in my opinion, right? Because that's where we get our news from. A lot of times, man, a lot of podcasts. That's where I get my news from. Believe it or not, as silly as that may sound, but you know, at the end of the day. You know, looking at like what Ben Milliken said, and you guys tapped on that, you know, two, and that was my point in the question was two years ago because we're talking about COVID. I truly believe, and I'm not trying to bring that, you know, the, the big bad word, but, you know, when we were going through that, before that, I can't really recall this much drama. It was bigger, if you will, if somebody broke the rules, you know, with BASS, et cetera, but it was a bigger deal. You know, now that we're beyond that and everything, as far as, you know, like we were talking about technology, you know, these corporations that have bought into these, you know, smaller, you know, companies, and you're talking about like one megacorp owns, like Ben Milliken said, you know, all these other companies, it's become that way now. And I've noticed that you know, I'm not looking to gain sponsorship, but as a tournament director, I've tried and no, I have not heard it has anything to do with social media or anything like that. But you can, if you just sit back and you stay quiet and you pay attention to the company at, at hand and you watch what they do on social media, oh, yeah, it speaks right. differently. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm not saying that to be, I, and I'm not going to call anybody out, but if you if you kind of just sit back and just watch and don't engage, which has been, you know, when we touch on MLF, I'll give you my opinion on James Watson on how I would have done this, but I've learned kind of taking a step back and being the owl on the branch and watching will teach you a lot more than if you do engage and you jump in. But, you know, I digress on that, but you know, that's been a big question for me is because a lot of people, they give an opinion or they comment. Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Cinco's or a jackhammer chatterbait. All Patreon members will receive 5% off all of their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle each and every month. You will also get 10% off all of your orders to our newest sponsor, Tiger Crankbaits, who won best in show at the Richmond Fishing Expo. You will also gain membership to our private Facebook group com community where we talk about fishing, what's coming up, and you'll be entered into weekly prize giveaways, private live streams and videos, and so much more. If you would like to see Fishing the DMV continue to bring you content, please think about joining. Link in the episode description. Thank you so much. And I've done it. You know, I, I'm more of a retaliator when I see somebody make a comment, but... Well, 
And it's just passion. I mean, you know, the whole origin for my show was I was in my NBA class and I was listening to the junkies with the Redskins and they were bitching about their defense for the 500th time because the Redskins can't stop shit when it's in the five yard zone. And it's like, well, and I forgot who said it, but it's like, oh, these people are just hating. It's like, no, they're just passionate fans. Yeah. A a lot of the comments there, you have to understand that it is passion too. There are malicious actors, 100%, but it's people being passionate about a sport instead of football. It's, it's bass fishing. It's true. And it's a lot of money in it. It's mm-hmm. not, you know, it's the, yeah. you know, social media has, you know, social media has really been a downfall the whole entire country. I hate to say that. Oh, I mean, nice. it really has. I mean, it, you know, it's a lot of dirty laundry is aired on social media and it really has been a downfall for everything. I mean, you know, we're recording crap that you never saw before on people putting it on social media like it's funny and, you know, fights in schools and all this other crap that's taking place in the world today. And it really has been uh, kind of a downfall. I mean, it really has. Yeah. And now with everything in bass fishing, rule breakage and the problems we've had there, I mean, it's it's just, it's like you said, some people passion some people are a lot of bs antagonizing it, it yeah, really is we go. got a great question here ricky falk or this is more of a statement my apologies that the opens and the elite and the elites the tournaments go to places who pays bass the money they want right. to come there and the and virginia did not put the money out to bring bass here I think two things can be true at once yes that is correct virginia doesn't want the money there but i also think it's a flawed system two um I can answer that question. I was there. They lost their ass. The two counties went into it together, Franklin and I want to say Bedford. And they lost their ass. They didn't know how to promote it. They did not have a team to promote when Bass was here. And it pretty much, I ain't going to say it made zero, but I don't think they ever made their money completely back from both times that Bass was here. Because I... Guys, I started the Bass Cast six months to a year before Bass showed up here on Smith Mount Lake, and Kevin Van Dam won one of them, and you know Skeet Reese won another one. Big old swim bait, but they lost their butt. And you know, yes, the Opens came last year, and the to Bugs, still in Virginia, guys, but yeah. it did great. I mean, the they knew how to promote it. They had the locations. We just don't have the facilities on this Mount Lake. You got one hotel and a bunch that of little. That would be a good one. That would be a good one. And you got a bunch of little dinky rink motels and stuff to stay in. Or, you know, and also, 08 and 09, we didn't have Airbnb. Yeah. Like, we, it, yeah. We yeah, didn't have a lot of that stuff that we have now, which probably would have made it a little bit better but at the same time the town did not know how to market this event they never had anything beside like a little state fair come where you're talking about professional anglers showing up at smith mount lake <clears throat> i told everybody my opinion on that smith mount lake is a great lake i'd love to see them come back but i think it would have to be a classic um for lynchburg and we all know that they don't dr- mind driving 45 minutes to an hour and even an hour and a half from some tournaments to weigh fish. And, uh, man, we got Liberty university here. We could host it there. They got a big arena. They just built another big arena. We got a crap load of motels here. Uh, I, I hate to say it. I don't want to give Rona any plugs because it ain't much there. It's falling down and it's rough, but, uh, I'd be scared. My boat be stolen. But that's side of point. But I mean, you know, that's what it's probably going to take. But I mean, you know, they brought the uh, big bass tour here about, gosh, how long has it been? Probably about eight, 10 years ago now, at least 10 years. And it sells out every time. We are their num- big bass tours, number one location. I was told by the team, Mark again, uh, that they were, uh, pro- we were, the- and we were the first one to have two events on Smith Mountain Lake. You know, a spring and a fall big bass tour event. We were the first time they ever did that because we had so many anglers coming to fish Smith Mount Lake from New York to Maryland to Virginia, West Virginia. They come. No, from they got. Virginia. Here's a good I, question. Here we go. Brandon says, "What about the BPT or Tackle Warehouse tour going to Smith?" That's interesting. I don't know about that. Um, 
Yeah, that I don't be have really any. Cool. I don't know anything about that region. I mean, Brian, what? Do you, yeah, I mean, that, that, that would. I mean, that would, You know, like I said, with with the new technology of the Airbnbs and all the other yeah. stuff that we have out now, yeah, I, I could see, I could see it happening. But they still don't have the. I mean, we have one hotel, a couple of rinky dink hotels. Other than that, you have to drive forty five minutes to an hour to get to a good hotel. What do you think the bank loan on a, on a building a motel is? I might have to get into a new business. Might have to come out yeah. there and start putting some motels up on the yeah, lake. no joke. No, they wouldn't want it. You can hang it up. That's that's us right here in Central I mean, Virginia. They wouldn't want that at all. But I mean, go ahead. I think it would do. I think it would do great. I mean, we get the college. You know, we get the college kids here. Um, they show up at Smith Mountain Lake. You know, we got a op We got a. Uh, I didn't say open. Good gosh, we got a. Uh, uh, FLW event on uh, Smith Mountain Lake this weekend. So, I mean, you know, I, I think that would do great. But Bugs was awesome because Bugs for the Bassmaster Open, you got two motels there, 30 minutes up the road, you got about 10. At, and another 30 minutes up the road, you got about another five or 10. So, I mean, it was plenty of locations for people to stay. That, that's our problem. I mean, I hate to say it, guys, it really is. But it, yeah, it just it just stinks because it. We've done I, so much work on that lake to put them tiger bass in there. Yeah, and we're seeing it pay off. I mean, we've almost had a ten pounder, guys. Yeah. And I want to. I'll, I'll break it right here on my show, on your show, Thomas. Not my show. Uh, if there is a ten pound bass caught in a bass cast tournament series this year, on my scales. Uh, our sponsor, um, SML Tackle Shack, will give away a five hundred dollar gift card. Oh, that's awesome, dude! I love hearing stuff like that with the tournament trips. Yes, he fun. wants to see a ten pounder. We had a nine, I think it was a nine eight last year, come across the scales. So I mean, if we get a ten pounder, it's five hundred dollar card guaranteed. Mm. Said I'm that's welcome important. to come out there, right? Yes. Fish with the bass cast, everybody. You know, my opinion on them, you know, these bigger format tournaments, man, and maybe it's because we just got hammered with it on the river, what, last year and the year before. It just felt like during the summertime there was a larger format, you know, be it BASS, uh, MLF, or what have you. You know, having that break is not a bad thing in my opinion. You know, my biggest, what I tell a lot of guys, my opinion about when those format, those style tournaments come into town, it's awesome for the local talent. It gives them a chance to kind of build their platform, if you will. But, uh, you know, that's a lot, you know, on the James and the Chick and the Appomattox, you know, like that's a lot of pressure. You know, that place is getting pounded, you know, weekend after weekend. And I mean, the argument now states is that there's a tournament on the river every single weekend. I don't know how it is with Smith Mountain, but oh, yeah. they're not lying. There, I, I can honestly tell you, I truly believe there is a tournament 52 weekends, you know, every single weekend out of the year, you know, be it Osborne all the way down to, you know, the Brickyard or Rock Island. So, But that's just 2024 because the Potomac River is the same way, Gunnersville, like any place that is big enough to hold tournaments is, is going to be like that, sadly. There's too much money in it now. I mean... Did there's too much money in it. And then th this is the one thing I hate about the whole system about you have to get paid to go there when the system should be set up to where you're just going to go to the best fisheries period. And that's when, you know, back in the day with FLW, you were going to go to Beaver Lake and now, Oh yeah. We have the St. Lawrence River. I forgot about Beaver Lake. Yeah. I was going to say the same exact thing. I haven't heard that forever. Yeah. I heard but that in a while because they paid and the St. Lawrence is basically Beaver Lake, except it doesn't suck, but right. they're going to keep going there because they get paid. And that's, I don't know. It's like, it's an issue when it comes to the th fact that bass or MLF or any organization are supposed to be about conservation, but you will beat up on the James river for 200 years straight. And then you have a fishery that let's say we did invest a, a million dollars to make Smith really good. You should at least, if you're bass or whatever organization, acknowledge the work that was done there and then offer whether it gets accepted. It's just that's the right thing to do because it's going to force these wildlife agencies to put money into their fisheries. That's what you want. You yeah. do. You get you do. You get mentioned in the magazine as the top one hundred lakes in Virginia. I mean hundred lakes in the USA to fish. That they'll never <laughs> go to because Clear Lake has been number one God knows how long, but they're never going back. 
I you know, know uh, guys, you guys are you guys are talking about that. I mean, Major League Fishing's coming back, and it'll be on the James River this year, and it's going to be the Bass Pro Series this year. So, I mean, they're they also going to another place, right? A, a new place. So Down they in just the, kind of swapped. When are they coming to the James? The, you won't have the Tackle Warehouse invitation. Well, it ain't invitational. I guess it's invitationals. You won't have Tackle Warehouse series there this year, but you'll have the uh, you'll have the Major League Fishing guys that are coming Where, this year. When is the uh, MLF on the James? I'd have to look that up to be honest. I, I can't. Really, I'm on my phone. I go inside, and my kids are wild, dude. They're still hyped up on Easter candy. <laughs> I'm not lying, man. It's like 25 rubber bands bound as tight as they can bound in each one of them kids right now. If I go outside that house, yeah. but I, I, mean, I mean, I will say so. It's called the ch okay, guys, you guys, C H O W A N River, the Chawan, 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 Chawan. That's really yeah. something new. Like, I've never heard of that place before. I've heard of it a little bit, but you know, it's I don't, I don't, I don't know a lot. Of, I ain't gonna lie, I don't know a lot about it, but. Yeah, uh, when is the James tournament? Is it James Potomac? It is James, though, right? Yeah, it's James going out of Osborne Landing, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, first. Is, is the uh, warehouse tour right? I can pull the schedule up now. No, it's the Major League Fishing. It's the uh, the Bass Pro Series. So it's the pros. It's not like a co-angler situation. No. I didn't think so. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're coming and... Uh, June twenty fifth through the thirtieth. There you go. That's when they're coming. I will be there, guys. I'm going to be there for probably the last couple of days. I'm not going to stay for the whole. I'm not going to take vacation time for the whole thing. But I plan on making up there at least for the final two rounds. If you go, I'll go. All right, I'll be there. I've already planned it, so I will be there. We got a question when it came to that scale. Shane Flynn outdoors says, "Where did where do I get said scale?" I cannot answer that because the owner of that, he provided the scales. Um, I want to believe they're AMG, but uh, Brian, where did you get yours? Uh, mine are pro series scales and uh, you can actually, you have to actually, they have a website and they're $500 on the website for the pro series scales. Hmm. And then I think it's like another five hundred dollars if you want the uh, board to go with it, which is the uh, digital readout board that you can have behind you. And so they have many little parts that you can buy. But yeah, they're uh, they're um, Pro Series scales, if I remember correctly. I'd have to. I'm actually, mine actually looking at mine right now. Give me a mine are actually still in the back of my car. Mine are outside too because I got to get them inside from a tournament from a weekend. PTS tournament. Yep. Tournamentscales.com. Yep. Hey guys, tournamentscales.com. Yep, tournamentscales.com. We have the digital board for hours, which works amazing for us. Um, and that's the, that's going to be the best ones you can. Those are ones. Yeah. I mean, if you're really going to run a tournament series and you want to run one right, go ahead and buy it and invest in it now. I mean, I know Cat's got a lot of those scales. They probably got a couple dozen of them things. But I mean, it's the it's the future and the way to go. Hey guys, I hate to be rude. I got to jump. We got a little situation. The uh, the boss lady is calling for me. The kids came out. Seems the rubber bands have popped. So I hate uh -oh. to be rude, guys, and leave like <laughs> you're that. You're fine. But, uh, you're fine. Thank man. you, guys. But my opinion is this, guys. At the end of the day, man, what's going on with Major League and James Watson and everything? It, you know, it's not going to change the platform of what we're trying to do. You know, you guys and me and what I'm trying to do with you know my division under Cat. But uh. Free James Watson. I got to say that before I go. Free James Watson. So, <laughs> guys, thank you all for the opportunity. Yes, You're sir. Welcome. Have a great day. See night. ya. Y'all do the same. Well, that's a great segue. Um, yeah. What the hell's going on? I, I turn on my... Uh, I was trying to have a good Easter with my family and all hell broke loose. So... It did. Set, set the scene. Yeah. I mean, it really did. I mean, for you guys who have kind of followed this a little bit, you know, Watson was on the Zaldane show. It was actually a pretty good show. And I didn't really catch more, you know, too many vibes from that. He's pretty, you know, laid back. But then he was on a Luke Duncan show. And I love Luke Duncan. We're friends. No issues. And then, you know, I, I think that's where he opened up his mouth the first time. And they find him, I think, was the five or ten thousand dollars. They find him the first time. And then during the classic, 
you know, uh, Duncan always does a party at one of the local bars or something like that. And he was on there. And if you go through, if you guys watched it, I watched it. Cause like I said, I'm a Duncan fan, but, uh, about halfway through it, you know, the hat starts flying, the alcohol starts flying and the, the, the chatter becomes, you know, the, the hat, you know, fish boat docks. I mean, that's where it all, I mean, we know what it means. I mean, I don't want to say it on here because I have to, I still get press releases from them. I'm still, you know, a part of the whole media aspect of it. But I mean, I just, I don't think people were ha happy. And I've heard from some of the anglers themselves and I'll, that they're not happy with the direction things are going. And we knew after last year, that was the, what, I mean, it's, that's the way it was last year when we first did our show together, there weren't, no one was happy with the direction. And, and I, I have been hearing about this, you know, free James Watson, everything's in the wrong, but can, can we set the, to make sure that we have some facts before we go into basically opinions versus facts, what basically happened was he said some things that broke rules, in, which were in the contract that he signed, correct? Right. About what he's allowed to say. Right. Um, if you guys go right now to the basscast.com, it's called unbelievable drama unfolds watson's major league fishing disqualification and you know it's rule number seven i actually put the rule in the story sportsmanship and i put a b c all i think the first three parts to it and you know this is kind of hard because boyd's fishes his own series and so he made a comment against an angler and then he made a comment against the tournament series itself. And that's just, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I, we're a hundred percent believers that you, that tournament directors should not fish their own tournament series. They should be a non biased person when it comes to all of this. How much of this was Watson looking for to pick a fight? just because it does create a great social media thing, which he's going to financially do fantastic from this. This happened actually in the gaming world for some some thoughts here, where in the latest rendition of Justice League, uh, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League, they execute Batman. And they do it right. on purpose because they knew it would create a ton of hate. And they ended up selling some games because their thought was, even though this will create negative publicity, it's the old adage, any publicity oh, is good yeah. publicity. A well, guys, smart. you know the hats have been flying off the shelves. Yep. And they are, I mean, he said it during the uh, show with, uh, you know, Luke Duncan the other night that he was sold out. And they were ordering more. So, I mean, you know, I'm surprised they're letting him back at all or giving him the opportunity in 2026 to come back. But that might have been in the contract as well. If you break a rule, you have to be gone for X amount of time. And it couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. But yes. Um, yeah, we all know James Watson's going to come out big time on this. And, he, you know, between the hat guys, he don't need the money. James does not need the money. He manages. I think he told me at Red Crest, it's over 100 houses that he gets a contract for managing. He sold like some properties and he's building like a $3 million house. It's arguing between millionaires. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And then I got, I got Rand, Randy in the chat. He kind of like, I think he hits on the head here. Randy is like, yeah, just a publicity stunt. A hundred percent. Um, I mean, you, you see this when, when Elon Musk says something and Tesla stock goes up or down, yeah. it's the same thing. And I don't know. I, it doesn't feel organic to me. And I think it's because I'm, I'm a jaded person at this point with all the social media stunts and stuff and the way this has happened. And then you look at, he's sold out of his hats and he's already branded it so quickly. And it's just, I don't know. There's just something it's, about it that doesn't seem right. I think I agree with you. I agree 110% because, you know, we, we brought up the whole conversation about social media earlier. I mean, you could hire somebody just to keep up with this shit. I mean, you really could. I mean, you know, with all the crap that's going on and it's just slowly little pieces here, little pieces there. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's now all in our face. But I mean, it's something happened that we might never know. 
that brought us to this point. Yeah, and, and I keep coming back to it because you know the comment sections are just so uh, oh, fun, hot, spicy. But I feel like a lot of it is a good pulse of of where people are when it comes to some of this stuff. And let me see if I can. I'll post this comment, guys, after the fact, uh, once I blur out the guy's name. I thought this was a really good one, so I'll just read this one off here for you guys. Uh, when Boyd decided to start the MLF, uh, the intent, like it or not, was to run bass out of the industry, strike one. In 2018, when Boyd Duggett decided to start uh, reinventing the rules and tournament framework that they considered to be their differentiator from their uh, inception and change and improve the fishing, that was strike two. And now with all the contest turmoil, it continues to uh, continues to happen. So it everything is about Boyd Duckett, and it's not about the BPT anymore. It's about the guy. And again, if you guys follow sports, the, the striking similarities between this and Roger Goodell is fascinating to me. Yes. Who signs Boyd's it, checks? It, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's it really is pretty crazy how, you know, when you're the face of the company, that's what happens. I mean, they don't come looking for you. They come looking for someone else when that goes down. Yeah, and and it was said the reason Goodell is in the position he is is it was that bridge gap between the owners and the fan base. And Goodell was set up to take the slings and arrows. And you guys can quickly Google search that Bass Pro Shop, Johnny Morris, owns 50% of this organization. The Outdoor Channel is the other 50%. And so... Yeah. I think we've talked about this online too before. It's like, why does Johnny let this happen? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a that's a great question why he's letting this continue. I mean, like you just said though earlier, I mean, besides the controversy, all controversy is good on, and or bad. And, you know, it's bringing, whether you like it or not, it's kind of tarnishing the name a little bit, but it's bringing more recognition to the sport and to major league fishing brand as a whole but you know that that was you know i was kind of upset with the kevin you know kevin van dam when he made his announcement that he was going to be on another tv show we were really hoping that kevin van dam was going to be the new face of major league fishing yeah. and that boyd was you know and that not boyd but um that johnny morris is going to step in and say hey this has gone long enough it's time for you to go. You either going to fish or be the director. And we think you are a better fisherman than a director. But I guess the reason that he's letting this happen is because this person is taking the slings and arrows for him and is distracting from what's really going on because you're not going to talk about white river Marina buying everything up. You're not no. talking about the monopolization of the whole industry. You're talking about what did Boyd do this time? Um, it's a great corporate tactic, honestly, because you're going to need somebody to be the head of it. And, you know, everyone knows MMA, who runs MMA. It's the same oh, thing. Yeah. Someone mentioned the WWE. You have the guy that's up that takes the slings and arrows from corporate. And now MMA owns WWE, so. Yeah, <laughs> weird, weird world we have here, don't we? Yes, uh, it is. See. Everybody's being bought out and bought up. We got Augie Boy. Uh, bass uh, pro bass fishing is like one of those Real Housewife shows. It's a hundred percent true. I love that. You just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Uh, that That's is awesome. perfectly awesome. Christopher, do you think it's a publicity stunt on both sides, like the WWE? I think a lot of that happens. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know if it's a publicity stunt or not because um, for you guys on the other side or don't see the other side there's been lots of rumors of a lot of stuff going down and I think it's all just come to a head and you know, it's burning. You guys saw, you guys saw Thomas's little logo. I mean, it's on fire. I mean, that's what's really going on. And there, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that we don't know. None of us will ever know it's hearsay. I mean, until you got the paperwork, judge Judy tells you that, but I mean, it's, well, you kind of wonder, I mean, you're hearing anglers not being paid. I mean, you're hearing so much stuff that, you know, anglers being paid late. I mean, we don't know how they do business. And until one of us are in the inside, we really have no clue. And and to your question earlier, Christopher, which I think is interesting about like, like WD, like publicity stunt. 
after watching Brian News' video and comparing and contrasting that with Watson's first press release of the thing, one does seem more authentic than the other. I'll let you yeah. decide which one it is. And so, yes, like you know what I mean? Like, and, and again, and and for the people in the comment section, I wasn't busting on Brian New. My thing was more of like what his logic was, because that's very interesting to think that blowing out one bed would be that big of an yeah. advantage. That's where I, I was kind of lost. I, I don't know. I, I There's a lot of turmoil in the fishing industry. We, we've talked about this a ton. I think there's another shoe that's going to drop when it comes to money. And I think that's why you're seeing so much monopolization within the industry right now. And it's people are nervous. People are jittery. I can't wait for ICAST this year to hopefully get some more juice about what's happening behind the scenes because I think oh, there's yeah. something happening. Yeah, because at ICAST, people will be talking. Yeah. Big freaking time because that's when we're all together and we don't have the public. And, you know, a lot of people are talking about what's going down. You know, at the end of the day, I think I would be really scared if I was major league fishing right now. Why? Because if if Watson decides to take them to court and starts making allegations, the books get opened. And everybody gets to see what's going on in major league fishing. You know, I I Danielle watches enough court TV that I watch upstairs and with her that, you know, you know, they tell them straight up if 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 you don't want your if you don't want your name drugged through the mud, you just pay whatever that person wants and you keep on going. Yeah, like, but, I, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you because Disney had this case a while ago, yes. but they won't let it go there because BPT has more money to pay Watson off. I don't think Watson has enough money to go into litigation unless somebody backs him. So I think yeah. it would be a stinking, he a stinker headline. But unless somebody backs him to go through the whole court thing, because that's a ton of money. I, I don't know if mm -hmm. we'd ever get to that point, though, sadly. It yeah, I don't I don't think it I, I hope it doesn't get to that point either. But I mean, like you said, I mean, we just so many more questions. It just the question is, I guess I wish one of your listeners could, you know, that is able to keep up a hell of a lot more than I am because there's so much going on these days that how we got to this point. I mean, mm -hmm. what really what was the really the firecracker that started it all to get to us to where we are now? is the real true question besides just him blabbering on a couple of different podcast shows. It's also happened when the bilge came on too, the trade sound day one that really kind of, I think there's different podcasts out there. Some are more just entertaining, some more are like education. And I feel like if you had to close your eyes and say three words that describe the Zaldane podcast, it was more of like trying to break news within the industry and be mm -hmm. the edgy one. Mm -hmm. And, it just seems in general, a lot of those episodes are about like trying to get underneath the belly of the beast for better or worse, because I, I don't know, like, is the thought there that that's just to get sponsors? I don't know. I mean, they've got sponsors. I mean, Battleborn Battery sponsors their show. I mean, that's their title sponsor for the uh, Village podcast. But you kind of what you are right about that, though. I never really thought about that because I'm a big Zaldane fan. And, I, you know, I love his wife, Trait. I mean, she's the hard hitter. I mean, that thing right there. She's a firecracker. She don't mind at, you know, she says, I ain't going to skin the game and I'm going to ask all the questions I want. So, but you think you're right, because if you go back and listen to all their shows, it really is to get the dirt. And it's funny because she said, like, I don't have any skin in the game. It's like, well, that's a lie, because if you do something, you're it'll affect your husband. Correct. So it's like it's a weird I, I don't know. It, it's but you're right. It, the industry right now is an absolute turmoil. And when we say about well, what's going to happen with BPT, it's not going to die. And I think this is something I, I think it is such a big juggernaut. It'll get bought out. But the idea like tomorrow BFLs don't exist anymore. No, but you know what I mean? And I see that in the comment section a lot. Someone asked me the question. I was supposed to be on another show later tonight, but I'm glad uh, it, I got moved. But, you know, they asked me this question. So what, what happened if they closed today? I said, well, it'd just be like when Toys R Us went out of business. Toys R Us went out of business. They liquidated everything. They yeah. sold all the weight tanks. They sold all the scales, paid off all their debt. And then someone bought the name and mm -hmm. someone else bought Toys R Us and opened it up as an online store. And now they're coming back with stores. Someone else would do the same thing with Major League Fishing and, uh, you know, Major League Fishing and its whole entire organization. Someone will let them burn sell it all and buy it back for pennies on a dollar and you know and you know that's a 
that's a great thought right here. What do you think if Mr. Bass Pro Shop himself is letting it burn? Because he knows at the end of the day, he would be able to pick it up for pennies on the dollar. He potentially could. I mean, I mean, again, like you said, he owns 50%. Why not get in the other 50? And that's what's so weird is the BPT has more money than Bass. The, and I mean by that, by like the backers, like he has right. Bass Pro Shop backing that tour versus the Bass Masters thing. So I just want to get into Johnny Morse's head about what is the 3D game that you're playing right here with everything? Because the B, BFL infrastructure and the grassroots, the whole reason Major League Fishing bought them is because it had such a solid business plan that you could just plug and chug and do it. And right. Again, like I go back to comment section saying like tomorrow, like it'll all be gone. It's like, I really think like you said, a private equity firm will come in, buy and just keep the BFLs running because it's a system that's in place. You don't have to start from scratch. No. And it, you know, the, that was the whole conversation before they bought FLW was, you know, the first year, everything, you know, they ran the Bass Pro Series. And then, you know, second year, they were talking about a feeder system and they needed that. Yeah, <clears throat> because they didn't have a feeder system for the college kids. And then, you know, like you said, the local and then, you know, now we got the tackle warehouse invitationals, the Toyota series, I'm trying to think of all the daggone series people. So, I mean, they didn't have all that that they needed. And so they borrowed some money from daddy. And here we are. I mean, you know, Bass Pro Shop. I ain't going to say they pay for it. I don't know. But they they borrowed some money and they bought it. I mean. I don't see where Boyd's got this type of money. He ain't won much. He ain't won a whole lot of damn tournaments over the last few years. He won a classic, what, maybe a decade ago, two decades ago. I mean. But Boyd is not fun bankrolling this thing. And I think it's such a weird no. thing. The cult of personality around Boyd that Boyd's doing all this stuff, like he's the boogeyman. And it's like, he's not the main puppet master. Everyone. No, <laughs> no really he not. definitely is not. And I, you know, I, I don't know enough about Boyd's business. You know, he, you know, he came out those rods, ducket rods. The rods did pretty well. I mean, I was there when they came out. I mean, I was at the shows when they came out and they sold off the racks. People were carrying them out like they're carrying candy. But I mean, I, I don't know his real business experience, and I don't really know. Um, Dang, I had it, his name. The other one that's part of it. I mean, Kevin, you know, I know Kevin, KVD is part of uh, Major League Fishing. And um, Gary Klein, there it is. Klein's part of it. And uh, so I don't know really if Klein's the businessman behind it all. And he's just letting Boyd take the the fall. And it's, it's a lot of puppets in this game. And something I wanted to ask you earlier, we were on the topic. It is interesting when you just take a step back to see the cult of personality around Bass versus MLF, where if MLF sneezes, there is 10,000 people there ready to burn them down. Anything Bass does, it's it's never Bass's fault. It's something else's fault. And then Bass's ability to just kill a story, it it's weird. And this is, this is, I think, one of the issues that made ML, they created MLF. If you guys don't understand this, like they created their own worst enemy with the split way back when. And again, this story with Brandon knew it was hard for me to find the damn thing. It was like, they just killed it. Yes. What is with their PR? Cause it's almost like at the other end of the spectrum compared to MLF. It really is. You know, you brought that up. I, I don't think I don't. For, first of all, I don't, you know, OK, let's go back to bass like original bass. I mean, you know, at first, you know, they caught fish, they killed them. Then, you know, later on, years later, you guys all saw the history of bass on Fox. I mean, it was there. And then, you know, they got into the conservation part, catch and release. You know, they did the way in catch and release. And I think just the sport as a whole, because. You got to think bass fishing is not a poor man's sport. Mm -mm. And there's a lot of guys in their 40s to 60 years old, and I say even 65, who grew up in that side of it. You know what I'm saying? And now we're asking them to change. We're going to do differently. We're going to do this. And I think a lot of them just didn't like the change. They didn't like the format. They didn't like how it was handled. They didn't like every fish counted. They, they didn't like, um, 
the Dink Fest, as it became called. I mean, it became Dink Fest like the first year. I mean, some of the tournaments, as long as a way to pound. And then they went to some lakes where they had to be at least two pounds, and then every fish counted. <clears throat> but we brought this up, and I think we did. When they went to five fish from every fish counted, you saw a few different winners that you hadn't seen in the past win some of these events. And, I'm so glad you teed that up. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, it's like you you kind of wonder. I'm not going to say it's no skill, but damn, every fish counts. I mean, there's no real skill. It's a different you get in a damn. Skill. I mean, just like the Red Crest Cup. He got into a spool. He got into one location. He just went back and like netted fish all day long. I mean, and won. I mean, it, 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 it's a different type of skill because I truly believe the the best angler in the world is one that can win on both sides. And you yes. saw so many great anglers that couldn't catch five but could catch multiple. And you had some guys that could catch every fish but can't catch just five. So it was really interesting when you saw anglers bounce back and forth to see which ones – it doesn't matter. You put them on a lake, it's a thousand fish or five, they'll kick your butt. That is fascinating because that's a National League and American League baseball, mm -hmm, I think, where mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Um, but what you hit on, which is interesting, is the people that were complaining weren't necessarily the best ones. They were the ones that sucked at the format. And then you look at the Bassmaster Classic yes. this year, and everyone that's bitching are the ones that suck at forward facing sonar, generally speaking. Yes. And so it just seems like that's kind of where we're at, where the people that really didn't like where MLF was going, mm -hmm. and in the beginning, guys, and there's other drama there too, were the ones that really sucked with the, the the change in the format, and they're the same ones in the same spirit that are getting up there complaining about what forward facing Sonora is doing to the sport. I was gonna I was gonna look it up, but I don't have time. But the Zaldanes had someone on a couple weeks ago, and you know. He was one of the anglers that was cut from Major League Fishing this year. And he came out and just said the format did not work for his style of fishing. And it don't work for everybody's. And I mean, that's those are the ones that you see are getting cut off the bottom pretty much. The, the style is not their style. And a lot of these anglers are the five fish tournament series anglers that started fishing bass master who left and went over to uh, Major League Fishing. I 100% agree with that. We got Chris Sherwood in the comment section. You really don't hear John Cox saying anything bad about forward-facing sonar. Uh, love you, love that guy. No, but he just wants to fish, and and he's willing to come out there and just fish any, any tournament organization. And the one thing that he said, which really I thought was interesting, was talking about with Bassmasters, the way their schedule sets up, it interferes with a lot of different organizations. Mm -hmm. And the one perk about the MLF is that you have the Tackle Warehouse Tour and the BPT. Both you can win $100,000, and they don't interfere with each other. So right. if you're a John Cox type, you can fish more tournaments. That's interesting because that is true from the Bassmaster side of things. The Opens don't pay much at all. No. The Opens are just there to get you into the uh, elites. Now, the thing I wanted to end Or the get you into the Classic. Sorry. Yeah, or we're getting to the classic. Yeah, the other sorry. thing I wanted, wanted to talk about in the show is just the the silent one. I think we talked about this last time. They're quiet. They do their own thing. They let the other two kids kill each other. What year do you think they fit into this whole thing? Because they're Man, really John Cox has already threw out an invitation to uh, while we're on the John Cox thing, guys. John Cox is a shallow water angler, and I interviewed him a year ago, and he said he had forward facing sonar, and guess where it was? It was in his truck. It wasn't even on his boat yet, but uh, John's already give a, uh, uh, you know, a welcome to our boy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, guys, as long as they keep doing what they're doing, they've got a great organization. The NPFL is what we're talking about, everybody. I love the NPFL. I love the guys over there. I got to meet one of the NPFL uh, members at the uh, Red Crest. But, you know, Watson's got a home there if he wants to go in 2025 because, John, like I said, the invitation is there. But, I think they're going to come out on top. I really do. I think it's, I think just keep quiet. Yeah. Just keep stay out. Just stay out, pay your bills, let the, let, you know, let it burn and see what the hell happens. Burn, baby, burn. Remember that I was saying? Burn, burn baby, baby, burn. burn. 
It, it is. And and I just love everything where they're because this was I remember when Ike and Ellie, when his podcast first was got started. And he's like, when does the FLW and Bassmaster come to table and, and they figure things out? And it was like, never. they never will. And MPFL is like, you know what? We will. So you guys set your schedules. We'll work around everyone's schedules. We're going to give, this is a cool thing in the industry. It's called customer service. <laughs> We're going to give the customer what he wants. And holy shit, it works. Like it, it's, I don't know. It, it's such a weird revolutionary concept where anglers have been complaining since the FLW Bassmaster debacles of like, just yeah. figure out your schedules and we would like to fish both. Neither one wanted to do that. And MPFL basically was like, we'll do that for you. And it, you know, it's crazy. Because if they're not fishing, they're not making money and they're not making money for their sponsors. And that's what it's all about. And that's why we should play nice, daggone it. Yeah. Because if I go to Thomas to fish in the DMV and say, hey, Thomas, I'm fishing two series this year, even if, even if I'm fishing out of a kayak, you know, I'm going to be at X amount of events in front of X amount of people. And this is what I want from my ad. I mean, you get a better chance the more publicity this person, uh, John yeah. Cox, is. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, there's a couple different anglers that fish different series, you know, and some of them just don't need the money. But at the same time, it's, you know, that's where it's at. It's, where, it's how you make it. Brian, we covered so much tonight. I really appreciate sure. it. Is there anything else that we have to cover? And I want to make sure you plug away what you got coming up. Nah, man, everything is good here, guys. Um, just head on over and uh, follow the basscast.com. Uh, like I said, I, I wrote a story the other night about the Watson, my, my thoughts and my take on it. Um, it's been blowing up. It's, I still got comments coming across the board right now. Uh, Basscast Radio, guys, we record an uh, episode every Wednesday night and drop it on Thursday. So i uh, love for you guys to tune in and check that out. And I uh, appreciate those who are listening on uh, all your podcast networks or either on YouTube. Um, April the 27th is our next Basscast Tournament Series event. We had a great turnout yesterday, Thomas. We have 41 boats show up on Smith Ooh. Mount Lake. Not yesterday. I apologize. On Saturday, it's Monday. Good gosh. Yesterday was Easter. But for an Easter weekend, we appreciate everyone for coming out and fishing with us. And uh, like I said, our next one is April the 27th. But I'll be at the BFL uh, on Smith Mount Lake Saturday. And uh, I'd love to see you all and uh, say hi and uh, kick a tire. And let's talk some bass fishing because my phone's been blowing up. I ain't going to lie to you guys. I mean, people getting my thoughts and my takes. And, you know, it's we'll, we'll see what happens. I. I can't say but so much because we're all in the industry and it's small. Yeah. And then, and guys, that's why I'm trying to stay as neutral as possible to where yeah. I can say what I want to say. Cause I'm actually supported by you. Patreon members. I don't have anybody there, but I'm not going to talk out of turn either. I want to make sure there's facts given there with everything yes, and, and 100%. not just the drama. Cause there's enough people there and it comes down to contracts too. I, and, and even Watson kind of prefaced it that with what he said there at the beginning, he's like, Oh, I don't want people to feel bad for me. It's like, if you broke a contract, you broke a contract, whether people want to know that or not. Like, just don't sign shit. I mean, honestly. When you have a contract, even at your damn basic job, guys, when you fill out that resume, when you fill out that application, you put it in, and they make you sign some paperwork at McDonald's. Yeah. You're doing a contract. I mean, you're not supposed to talk bad about the company, whether you like them or not. I mean, but hey, you know, it's a different story. We've gotten into a world now, and like you just said, you brought up earlier, TikTok. Facebook, we're all recording. We can all this, and you know, and now everybody's feeling sorry for everybody, and blah 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 blah, and it's spilling over into crap we really don't want to see it. At. I agree. I 100% agree with you. Um, and then, guys, yeah, absolutely. Please give him a follow. Link in the episode description when this thing gets reuploaded tomorrow. And then, I guess I'll be back on probably the Basscast at some point. We'll do our quarterly like, yes, sir. review. Yes. Yes, of, uh, sir. Of all the seasons and stuff, because there's so many fishing tournaments going on right now. It's, it's insane. <laughs> yes, the fishing season has begun here, guys, and it's 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 only getting better. I think Smith Mount Lake's in the mid 50s. If you haven't checked out our weather uh, around the globe, weather, or what what's it called? I can't remember. Dead going it, but it's weather 24 seven. That's what it is. Update 24 seven. We got all the information you need to know about Smith Mountain Lake on our website. And you guys can go there before the tournament this weekend and see how, see the water level, the water temperatures. I, there's like six different water temperatures throughout the lake. So, I mean, 
the lake is the lake's on fire and we're hoping to see that 10 pounder in 2024 come across the bass guest tournament scales it's going to happen I, I think a 10 pounder is going to be dropping there at smith at some point they're they're in there it's just got to have one hook up with it you know yeah guys as always thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it we got more episodes coming this week and then uh Ooh. next week uh for monday night live we will have members of the black bass advisory board we have our quarterly meeting early monday and then as soon as that meeting's over i'm going to be on to talk about what new maryland laws are coming down the pike for bass fishermen as always like and subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time on fishing the dmv bye you're listening to fishing the dmv with your host thomas aarons fishing the dmv is brought to you by jake's bait and tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.